OK. Now, if you've loaded Daz Studio for the first time and you haven't yet used the Animator plugin, you might notice that Animator is nowhere to be found in your workspace. To correct that, you simply need to go to View, go to Tabs, and select Animator. There we go. Now for this plugin tutorial, I'm going to drop this and dock it down here at the bottom. You can place it anywhere you like, but I want to have the interface visible along with the preview window so that I can show you different aspects of these tools and we can preview instantly what effect they have on my animation. Okay. The first thing that we'll get started with is the animator timeline. Now, the timeline, you may notice, looks strikingly similar to the default timeline that comes with Daz Studio out of the box. It's just a little bit bigger. And that's generally true. I can drag the timer index forward and backward and see my animation move forward and backward. I can step through my animation a frame at a time, forward or backward. I can jump all the way to the end of my animation. I can jump to the beginning of my animation and I can specify whether or not I would like the animation to loop once it's done playing. Additionally, uh, Animator allows me to select which layer I'm currently working on. Right now my animation only has one layer, the base layer, and so that's what's selected. If I had multiple layers, I could select any one of those and now the rest of the view would be in terms of the layer that I currently have selected. These buttons are for advancing backward and forward through actual keyframes, which we'll get into in a second, and allow me to add and remove keyframes that I may see in the workspace here. Additionally, I can jump directly to particular frames if I want to, like say frame 20, by entering in the frame that I want. This will also limit the playback when I hit play to frames 20 through 60. If I wanted to limit play from 20 to um, 30, you might think that you're going to modify this box to simply say 30. Pay close attention though. You see this window that says, are you sure you want to delete? It means what it says. If I click yes, I'm going to lose all my frames of animation from 30 to 60, which is not what I want to do. So I'm going to say no. Why is this there then? Well, this is there in case you have an animation that goes a little too long and you want to cut it short. You may want to cut it down to 30 frames from 60. This is how you do that. I'm going to set this back to zero. And now we're back to our normal animation. This next box, current layer only, works in conjunction with this dropdown. Right now, we're simply saying that we want our keyframe editor to only show us keyframes for the base layer. What this is saying is that in our preview window, when we hit play or when we fast forward or rewind on the timeline, we only want to see animations that belong in the base layer. Without this checked, even though I only have the base layer selected, I'll only be able to edit the base layer properties, but during my preview I'll actually see, without this box checked, every single layer of animation combined. So this is a neat toggle to have. This last option, real time, allows you to specify how fast or how slow the preview will go. By default, Daz Studio will do its best to animate based on your hardware and your software um, capabilities. If, however, I turn on real time, you'll notice that it goes much faster. Finally, the preview tab allows us to specify what mode animator is in. This drop-down is one of the new features of 2.0 and is at the heart of what allows you to use animator along with other tools such as Puppeteer and Animate without conflict. 
We'll get into it a little bit more later, but for now, we'll leave this at preview.